there's so-called calories in that as well. And the entire metric is so flawed that it just <laughs> doesn't make any sense whatsoever. The thing is, is when something is repeated enough times, it's just accepted as truth and no one wants to look into it. But until you do, then you see the flaws in it. And you're like, oh, oh, this is bullshit. This doesn't make any sense. Howdy, everybody, and welcome to episode 226 of the SupersetYourLife.com podcast, your weekly workout motivation to fuel your life inside and beyond the gym. Coach Steven is joining us today from New Jersey to help me explain why you cannot eat calories and why it makes no sense whatsoever to track them. This is a question that almost every new client asks, and for a very good reason, it's a very good question. Uh, during our last, co during one of our last conversations, Stephen explained it like this: Humans gain energy through a chemical process. We cannot absorb heat units because we are not a steam engine. And that was like one of the most beautiful way to, ways to the most beautiful ways to summarize everything that I've learned this last year. It's taken a long time to wrap my head around this concept, and so I've just been trying to get everybody that I that, that I can to help me articulate this. Um, on our show. Uh, Steven, uh, he is another primal health coach that helps men between the ages of 35 and 60 to regain their health and vitality through the power of animal-based nutrition. Give me four years and I'll be in your main demograph there, pal. <laughs> Come on over. Whenever you're ready, brother. I got it. <laughs> Let's go. I think you got it pretty wrapped up, though. I think you, I think you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I, thanks. I, I hope so. It's kind of all I do every day, so I should know what I'm talking about by now. Yeah. But uh, his Instagram is at the.ancestral.perspective. Website is www.theancestralperspective.com. He offers free consultations. Nice guy. Uh, I, I If I were you, I would take advantage of that. When people ask for me for a free consultation, I say... Uh, 1 Timothy 5.18, the laborer is worthy of his wages, amen? <laughs> so uh, when you take your car to a mechanic, you pay them for their expertise. Don't You don't drill them with questions about your car for an hour, right? So if you book a consultation with Stephen, just make sure you don't abuse his time. Stephen, welcome to the yes. SupersetYourLife.com podcast. Thank you so very much for the invite. I look very forward to our conversation. I uh, I can't wait. Let's see how it goes. I'm thrilled. Yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been too long. So... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, why, so so why don't why don't you track calories, bro? Just let, let's let's just let, let let's just hear like what's uh, what's your argument against sure. what mo uh, so against what most people uh, would take as being common sense. And to be completely fair and candid, most people don't understand this stuff. And I used to be most people. I didn't, you know. I, you kind of want to take what people say at face value. You want to believe in the inherent truth and in what they say, and you want to think that what they're saying is good and robust and scientifically correct, and it's not. So. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've been an athlete my entire life. I've my, uh, I used to date a girl who's now a professional bodybuilder. She just, you do, uses calorie counting and stuff like that. So I, you always assume like, Oh, you know, this is a fair metric. This is the correct thing to do. This is what works. And it's, it's simply not. And here's why a calorie explicitly defined is a unit of heat energy, right? That's what it is. No more, no less specifically inside of what's called a bomb calorimeter, which is a closed thermodynamic system. So essentially what they do is, for instance, let's say a muffin. They put a muffin inside of a bomb calorimeter and they sent an electrical current through it. The amount of uh, temperature change in the water of that bomb calorimeter is measured by the calorie. Okay. Right. That's what it is. A human being has no capacity to, to soak up or absorb units of heat energy, okay? Not only that, the labels that you see on food, like if maybe that muffin has 550 so-called calories, okay? That's allowed to be off by 20% in either direction. Now you're talking about the potential of a 40% swing here. I forgot about just, that. You're right. It, it is. And that's just calories going in, right? That's just calories going in. Now, to measure your calories going out, you would need to measure the heat that's exhausting from your body out of your breath. You would need to measure your fecal matter, your shit, you know, because there's so-called <laughs> calories in that as well. And the entire metric is so flawed that it just <laughs> doesn't make any sense whatsoever the thing is is when something is repeated enough times it's just accepted as truth and no one wants to look into it but until you do then you see the flaws in it and you're like oh 
oh, this is bullshit. This doesn't make any sense. Well, and it's so deceptive because you think it's working right away. You start your weight loss journey. What are you doing? You're tracking calories. Tracking calories is at best, at the very best, a, a, an inaccurate way to trick yourself into eating less food. That's all it is. There's better ways to trick yourself into eating less food if you want to play that game. I don't Absolutely. recommend playing that game to begin with. <laughs> and there and there are some dangers in it too, Colt. Like you wouldn't think that it's anything, but it, but it is. So part of my program and what I believe in is that a hungry man will eat. If he's hungry, he's going to eat sooner or later. And and when you count so-called calories, what you do is you're actually reducing the amount of mass that you're intaking. That's what you're doing. It's a mass in mass out equation, right? Correct. So based on what macronutrient profile you're eating is going to affect your satiety. Now, when you're waging war on losing weight, you need to wage war in the right area and it needs to be on your hormones and on your genes. Okay. So if you are trying to lose weight by counting so-called calories, what you will end up doing is you can only use that as a metric. If you vastly grossly under eat, if you eat, if you under eat to a huge degree, which will have consequences because it's not good for your hormones. You're going to tank your hormones. You're going to tank your inflammasome. You're going to tank your endocrine system. It's not good for, for, for any of those systems, and it will harm your long-term health. You just, you, it's just all around is an absolutely idiotic decision. But it's, yeah. not, it's not idiotic, though, because people don't know any better. You know what when, I mean? did you, when did you realize this? I realized it when, when, whenever I would make a big change in my macronutrients yeah. um, and, I, and I would change the ratios, everything changed right i'm packing away over four thousand calories a day right now yep. technically yep. speaking if we're going to yeah. use that terminology and i'm losing weight most people can't do that um yeah. i've I, i've i've been on i've i've been on 2200 2300 calorie diets where most of my calories were coming from carbs i can't lose weight when i do that and i'm always hungry and i hate life Correct. i don't know if you can relate to that I absolutely have been. Well, I've been an athlete, like not, not a bodybuilder, but an athlete my entire life. I've been lifting weights my entire life. I'm an avid Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter for many, many years. So diet, exercise, all of those components. I'm, I'm very well in tune with that world. And obviously nutrition is a massive lever in that, right? Like mm -hmm. you, what you're eating is going to matter. It's going to affect your output. Um, the program that I just did actually with, with Mark Sisson and the Primal Health Institution, they kind of alluded to both paths with when it comes to so-called calories. But I think that there's a very prominent person in our community, and I think that he deserves shout. There's several, but one in particular is Bart K. Yeah, man. Like, uh, how, how is he not one of the most famous authors, nutritionists on this planet, man? He is brilliant. Yeah. It's not only is he brilliant, it's the way that he frames his argument. And even in, I believe he uses the word unassailable too, which, which means yeah. that there is no argument to the contrary, because what he's saying is scientifically proven as a fact, right? Yes. So a lot, a lot of the information that I got about calories before I took the program with Mark Sisson and got licensed was through, I was listening to a lot of Bart K's material. And the first time I heard Bart talk about calories, I was like, what? Like, Dude, he was speaking Greek. I, I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't track with it. That's why it took me so long to, to, to wrap yeah. my head around it. It's like, I just like, okay, okay, okay I've got to talk it through with people like you, like with Stephen Thomas, like with Richard and like yeah. e every, everybody that has, that has kind of gone, gone keto carnivore, because that's when you really see the, all the flaws in the system. Like yep. if, most people, if you're on a standard American diet, what you're eating, like probably gram for gram as much as, as as much protein as you as you are carbs that's pretty standard you know more yeah. carbs if you're if you're if you're yeah. if you're an intense athlete or something and mm -hmm. you're and, and then you got to make sure you're getting your fats in most people cut the fats when they start cutting that's the biggest mistake but ca yeah. but calorie counting almost kind of looks like it works when you're within yeah. that framework when you cut out carbs oh man now you just now, 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 now you just increase your your metabolism by thirty percent probably because now oh, you're yeah. in ketosis and now you ha and you have all these other hormonal changes that are taking place and so yep. that's why I, I think that that's that's why so many of the meat based crowd in particular are the people that are just like whoa this is all bullshit this does not add up it's it's absolutely correct you and when you like see for me when when I first I've been on this diet now for almost five years I've been doing it a long time. Yeah. And at worst, what I'll do is, you know, Monday through Saturday, I'll be really, really strict. And then on Sunday, 
God, I love her, but she loves to bake. So she'll make things and like, I'll just <laughs> there. And then during football, I'm a huge football fan. So I'll kind of cheat a little bit on Sundays, but I'll regret the hell out of it. Right. But that, yeah. that's at my absolute worst. Like, right. But now, see, I'm you're like, honest about it. Everybody yeah, knows yeah. that. Everybody knows that. You're just the yeah. one that'll say it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I have absolutely no it's problem. Ne- like, cheat cheat meals are never Listen, worth it, are they? I, I, no. No. Well, Yes and no. For so now to me, I don't advocate for eating these things, and I don't yeah. want anyone to think that I am. But I, for me, I'm I'm an athlete. I take very good care of my body. I'm you know I'm I'm in good shape. I really do train hard. For anybody who has like an autoimmune issue, or if you're a type two diabetic, or you have some sort of hypertension or underlying metabolic condition, obviously I think or or, or, have... or an addictive or an addictive personality to the point to that where too. that that's unsustainable. Because me and I find and I find that uh, at least most of the people that I work with kind of do fall into that category. But if it's that but seems... if it's but if it's but if it's sustainable thing. then yeah the underlying thing always seems to be some level of addictive personality or addictive nature right. so if you can if you can incorporate a cheat meal here and there and it doesn't make you insane um I don't really particularly see any problem with it like and and yeah and, and, and I'll just add to that that I hate you uh, you who he's speaking <laughs> <Yeah>. to because <laughs> that's I don't, I don't I don't ever seem like you know what it is dude I almost hate it after I'm done like sometimes like during a football game or something like that my, my fiance she'll make some she loves to bake right but she's also an athlete and she's you know she's a, a, a avid weightlifter the girl could deadlift 305 pounds she's a little animal right she's yeah. like five foot one she's a little savage but wow. she loves to bake. That's her, that's her thing. So on Sundays, it's like a thing for me and her. We'll go on a date. We'll have some pasta or something like that. And every time without fail, I will go, oh, oh, why do I do this? <laughs> Asshole. But, but I think that it's something. You also, like, you also live in New Jersey. You probably don't have any good Italian restaurants that have good pasta. None. Around, right? There's <laughs> none Italian restaurants over here. Yeah. In New York State's right here. Yeah. So, I mean. But the, the, the absolute bulk of my diet, I, I just did it. I can go show you the freezer right now. I've got 100 pounds of ribeyes and New York strips right there. Show it to me. Show it to me, please. I want to see you it. See it? Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if, you're actually, I'm if, you're, if, if you're listening, this is a video podcast, so you might want to check that one out. But he'll yeah. talk us through it. <laughs> All right, here you go. So here's the here's Spoiler alert, we're going to talk about our guns at the end of this, too. So get ready. <laughs> That's what we got left. So there's mostly strips left. Well, nice. I got one big sirloin left too. Well, that's oh what heck I got yeah! Left. So yeah, was, I, I actually. That was called my this. name. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that your adherence to it, like it's it's really if you get the big decisions right, Colt. Like if you get yeah. if you get you know ninety. 95% of the decisions correctly. Now, if you're a person who's just extremely sensitive to certain things and you're going to react really negatively to certain things, then obviously you're going to have to address things in a different way. But, um, you know, for the, for the majority of the population, I don't really see any, any real negative to having a cheap meal yeah. here and there. Yeah. So. But yeah, back to Bart K. I, I think that we need to, as a community, uplift this guy. Cause, cause, he has the credentials, Colt, that can't be argued against. Yeah, by the way, if you get uh, – uh, check out our show, Carnivore Coaches Corner. We had him on like six or seven sessions ago. We're, we'll, we'll have him back on again pretty soon, pretty soon too, actually. Awesome. We're gonna talk, yeah, we're, yeah, going to talk about uh, Sirol, the uh, stem cell um, the stem cell supplement. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I that, that actual supplement, I've bought some of it too. I've taken it um, – I just, I think that, um, I believe in, in his word. I, I really do trust him. Like it, you get a gut feeling about some people, you know what I mean? Like you want to trust your instincts and especially someone like me or you, I don't, I don't mean to, I don't know your background, but I would assume that you probably don't have like a, a scientific background. I don't. No. So when, when I'm listening to this guy talk, you know, it's like, man, I'm kind of at their mercy because I don't know any better. And that's really what's going on in the population. They don't know any better. And they've been taken advantage of by epidemiology. They've been taken advantage of by doctors because you can't make, because, because you can't make money off of somebody that's healthy. Sorry. There I said it, but yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. A a patient cured is a customer lost. Correct. Yep. That's exactly. Yep. But I think that he needs to be lauded, man. And I think that his message is, it should resonate, but what it is, is he has a bit of a style that, I mean, it's his own, and I enjoy it. I think it's funny, but he rubs people it, it, the wrong it, way. It is, but yeah, and and if you if you ever talk to him off camera, he's 
one of the nicest human beings I've ever met on the entire on, on the entire planet. Very well mannered. Um, when yeah. he starts throw, when he starts throwing out f bombs and stuff and like and like calling out other coaches, um, he's 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 doing it because because somebody is seriously spreading a message that is hurting people, Correct. and that's how he grabs attention. So it it is it is an act. Some people, Colt, they can't see that. Like they don't see what's yeah. what's what's underneath it, and what's underneath it is 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 moral turpitude. He doesn't right. like that you are spreading a dangerous message that can harm people because at his core he cares about people, and that's what's important. And I think there's a lot of people in our community that share that sentiment, and I think that um, this message is starting to grow, and I'm so grateful for it because. Yep. You know, I tell people the way that I eat and they, and they, and even to this day, they'll look at me like I got six heads. They'll ask me about my cholesterol and all this other stuff, which is an absolutely next to meaningless biomarker. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. And it's amazing. Like how the misinformation, and we're talking about 60 year old science that's been completely and utterly debunked from every single angle. Like, yeah. Bart, Bart is someone that I respect so much as a content creator in addition yeah. to in addition to what he teaches because if you just teach it nobody's going to listen right like you look at his science videos and his science playlists and they're legit and he cites mm-hmm. everything and yeah you got to sit down just like you're in college you got to take out a pen and paper and your brain's going to hurt after an hour and yeah. and there's and there's going to be a lot that you learn that's that's actually most of his content but it doesn't get any views so like when I make so whenever I make an Instagram post where it's something that's just like, I'm just being a nice guy off the, you, you know, and, and like, and, and seriously um, writing out word for word, what I know to be true and not to be true based on my experience and the anecdotal evidence of my clients, like I'll make a post like that and put my heart and soul into it. And I, and, and, and it's life changing. I know it's life changing. Great. And I'll get a handful of con- co- comments and a few likes and nobody sees it. Okay. I say all the exact same stuff, but I say it as a response to that chick that you and I did that collaboration on last week. Yeah. I just, I just pulled that up right now that I think that's the most watch hours I've ever got on a, on an Instagram post over this last year. Help me. A lot. I mean, I'm just getting it's, going, it's, obviously. Dude, it's all, yeah, dude, it's almost up to a thousand comments already. That's and great. But that, see, what it is, is it's cause, so cause, against cause you, the grain. Well, yeah, and you grab and you grab somebody's attention. Bart is a master at doing that, and oh, yeah. but but his yeah. but his science is legit, and that's why that that that's why you never see him get beat by anybody in debates because he because he knows there's no way to argue he's not with just him. right. That's because the, the, a lot of the people that he debates with are vegans that want to lean on epidemiology, which is which is an associative branch of science. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. And what they do is they come on the show and they all make the exact same fundamental and ridiculous error. And they say things like, well, your risk of heart. No, no, that's not what risk that's. You cannot underpin a claim of risk with an associative study. Take that word out of your lexicon because they do that on purpose because it's headline grabbing. That's what the IARC used to position themselves as red meat is a class two carcinogen which is fucking ridiculous first of all if red meat's gonna hurt anybody i'm dead because i've eaten literally <laughs> yeah i would be dead by now if red meat was that bad for you <laughs> yeah Let, let's see here i don't eat so the average american eats about 53 pounds of beef a year i eat a little bit more than that so i eat okay so so not two times more not five times more, not 10 times more. I eat approximately 25 fucking times more red meat than the average American. 25 <laughs> times. And I have done that for half a decade. And I'm only, oh, I don't know, 13% body fat and I can throw around 90 pound dumbbells. I'm <laughs> definitely dying. Oh, I'm dying over here. It's just nonsense. I, ha- I haven't even seen your physique to be completely honest, but I'm just looking at your face right now and your, Ita- your Italian accent. And I'm like, I'm not messing with this dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've been, I've, I've given my, especially life after seeing your rifle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how to use it yet. That's the fucking kicker. So maybe you a few months. <laughs> you're good for now. But, um, yeah, I, uh, dude, it, and like, and then everything about like what they say is wrong, man. You're like, no, nah, this isn't, this does, this isn't right. Like when you eat red meat, it's a satiating food that's delicious and that you should like. And then when you look at the anthropology and everything else, everything seems to align with it. And it's like, we've been eating this food for four and a half million years. 
Yeah. How does this all of a sudden take a right hand turn and now it's killing people? I think somebody has a hidden agenda. I don't know if it's Bill Gates or Google or who it is. Yeah, I don't know. Not, yeah. That's that's where it is. That's where it is right there. Because because yeah. plant based brother eats it means cheap and profitable. That's what that is. exactly. There's, 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 uh, plants are very addictive. There's uh, there, there, there's pro- there's profit margin in it. Um, if you're if if you're a meat based coach, what do you sell for supplements? Like I, I I sell I sell bodybuilding supplements on my website, knowing that most people are healthier without them. But I yeah. but 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 I but I do it with an with 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 an honest heart, and I can go to, and I can go to sleep yeah. at night knowing, hey man, most of these people that are buying this stuff, it's better than what they were gonna eat anyway. Oh, I feel like 100%. it's a great I feel like it's a great people to meet uh, meet people halfway, especially like with keto bricks or whatever. Yeah. But generally, another speaking, thing, I'm like, like guys that do like every, things that this, we do. This is my this, this this is my uh bro. This is my this this is my client clipboard. This is everybody that I'm training right now. Uh, every single one of these people is eating eighty to ninety percent red meat. And so then you got your people that it's like, this person likes keto bricks. This person, like, do not take coffee out of her diet. Otherwise, she will kill you. You know? <laughs> like... Yeah, yeah. I'm on that team, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just black. Coffee, plants are addictive. That, that case, like, I, plants I, are addictive. I, case closed. I told, I told everyone. I'm like, listen, dude. I gave up women. I gave up. I gave up carbs. I gave up alcohol. I gave up everything. Cigarettes. I gave up everything. I'm keeping fucking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> right but uh yeah yeah as far as far as like um the community goes though i'm glad to see it's growing because this movement is really expanded man and it's in it and i don't think it can be stopped at this point we're getting some peer review, peer review literature in it i think it's going to help uh another big one in the community that i've actually found that i look up to a lot it was actually the first person i ever known ever heard of in this community it was the first person i knew about the carnivore that was sean baker uh-huh and I'll tell you what it was about Sean Baker that made me trust him. I'm a fellow Air Force veteran. I was in the Air Force with – I was at the, in the Air Force. I think he retired a year before I got in. He was in Kandahar, Afghanistan. I was also a veteran of Kandahar, Afghanistan. I, I know the exact little location that he was Hey, thank you for serving, by the way, bro. Uh, I'm I appreciate just, I'm, it. I'm not just saying that because we're on the air, but thank you. For the yeah, man. Well, thank you so much for your support, dude, and I appreciate that. Yep. Um, but – he was in nuclear weapons launch officer, right? And that takes something called a Yankee white clearance. So there's something called a, a um, there's a secret clearance or there's something called a TS, which is a, a top secret clearance, which is really difficult to get. And they're going to go through every single piece of your life, all your history. They're going to talk to every teacher. They're going to talk to your neighbors because a top secret clearance is not a small deal. He had a Yankee white clearance. He was a nuclear weapons fucking launch officer, which is a massive deal. Cole. That is huge. Yeah. Okay. Because that means in order to get that, you had to have been among some of the most ethical people on this planet. Mm. You can't, you cannot get that clearance on you're a nuclear weapons launch officer. It doesn't get any more like serious than that. Right. So that was, can, 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 I, t- can I tell you, can, sorry, just one quick thing. Can I tell you a family secret? Sure. Uh, my brother that made that flag behind me, mm-hmm. Uh, he tells nuclear missiles where to go. That's his job description. <laughs> so he's got a he's got a he's got a Yankee White then. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I guess so. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but all I know is he tells nuclear missiles where to go. We love each other. I promise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, clear, clearly, because he made this flag for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we used to pick on him when we were, when 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 we were kids. We don't pick no, on. No, don't him do it now. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got access to people that don't even exist. Yeah. So if if they if they did a if 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 they did a if they did, if they did a poll on how many we we live in Montana if 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 they um if if they added up all the nuclear missiles um like in you know like to see which country had the most or whatever um I I, I can't I can't cite this or anything but I just but I just heard heard this in um heard this in, in science class actually <laughs> so this is a while ago but uh number one in nuclear missiles United States number two in nuclear missile war power uh Russia number three. If it was its own country, Montana would actually be a third place. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, um, no, uh, what what base is it? There in North Dakota, there's a large Air Force base that has a lot. Uh, Minot Air Force Base has a lot too. But I, that doesn't surprise me. I bet I've been to Minot a handful of times. Yeah. And yep. There's not a lot there, so no. it seems like a great spot to <laughs> just out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, but it's just, just, it's just that's like that, that, that's, where, that's where Shane lives right now too. That's where his bunker is. Is it's he just, Minot? Like, no, 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 no. He's uh, he's kind of in the Great Falls area. Oh, okay. Which is yeah, like that's north, another Air Force base, northern Montana. Yep. Um. Yeah. So Sean Baker, I uh, 
I was like, you know, this, cause he was the very first, the very first, like, I guess, influencer that I saw in this community. And I, and I've always loved animal based foods, you know, but I always thought they were killing me, you know, cause that's what, that's what you just get told. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I watched his, the first thing I ever saw was a London real episode he did. And I watched it and I was like, this makes a lot of sense. Like the things that he's saying. And I started digging into his history and like his past and was like, okay, you know, in people that are in the kind of situation that we're in, we don't have, I don't have a scientific background. I can't, I don't know if, you know, what you're telling me is correct. I can try to fact check you as best I can, but really I'm at, you know, we are at their mercy. They're the ones with the, with all the degrees and the scientific science background and all that stuff. So the fact that he was a nuclear weapons launch officer and I had that in common with him made me very, very confident that, you know, he's telling me credible information because he, he, this is, they don't give Yankee white clearances to just anybody. doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? What was your first experience with this stuff? How how did you find out about it? (laughs) Sean Baker. It was him too. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, I'm, I'm I'm looking at my book right now on my, uh, shelf with all my carnivore books on it. I don't know. I got probably about 20 of them. And that was, that, that was the first one that I read. I think the reason I liked it so much was because, I mean, it was, it was obviously popular at the time. That was like kind of a year or two after Sean Baker was on, uh, the Joe Rogan podcast, which is, I think yeah. kind of where, how, how everybody heard about it. I found, I've, I found that to be interesting still today in Montana. It's like the average person that I talked to about the carnivore diet. It's like, Oh, I, I heard it on the Joe Rogan podcast like yeah. five years ago, you know, it's like, st- like that, that, that was, uh, I think a big step forward in the meat based community. But, uh, yeah, that, that book was, um, I, I, I did that one and I started reading the carnivore code by Paul Saladino. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I just, I'm, 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 I'm reading a Dr. Kiltz's book right now. I'm loving that one, but yeah, it was, it was just, it was just a great entry level book that I could actually understand. Very, and, readable. And, 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 I read it too. And yeah. very readable. And, and, and the dude is just someone that, he, he he's 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 really standing up for what he believes in and you can yep. and you get and you get you get a feeling of his heart as you're reading the book and i wasn't surprised that you that you said that he's one of the most trustworthy people like on the planet for for, for, for whatever that's worth like he'd probably feel weird if he was he, hearing her to say that but like i i got the feeling that he was just a guy that i could trust by the time that i finished reading the book and so correct yep. get, when, when i when i got him on my podcast like a like like a year ago it's been a while since i talked to him but that's just Night, nicest guy ever, man. Like j- you, you just feel like you can trust him when you're talking to him. Yeah. See, that's that's the kind of gut, the gut feeling that I had about him was like I feel like I, I listen to a long format stuff and a lot of the things that he's done in different contexts with different guests and different podcasts, different shows, different times. Yeah, and I never felt like he was trying to shove something down my throat or like trying to sell me anything. Nope. I always felt like this is this is good because the, the way I started in, in all this man was in like 2019, my father got sick, very, very sick. Mm-hmm. He got terminal cancer. Mm. And, uh, at the time I had been an athlete. I'd been in the military. I'd done, I'd done a lot of beating on my body. Right. And, uh, one thing, I guess, I guess maybe it's just the Midwest culture that I come from. I, I grew up there, but no one really considered diet. Like everyone just kind of, you know, when you're hungry, you eat. And there's a lot of, it's a standard American diet. That's what everybody's on, right? So mm-hmm. when my dad got sick, I started pouring into research and reading all these books. And the first book that I read was called How to Starve Cancer by a woman named Jane McClellan. And I learned a lot about the biology of can of, of the, about, about how the how the human body deals with cancer, how it develops the mechanisms of it. Interesting. I'm familiar with her, but not the book. Um, yeah, the book is profound. It's very good too. You would okay. like it. And uh it's okay, basically about a lot of it, like you you know, when I, when I, when I got about 80% of the way through it, I was like, man, it's some fucking carbs. I was like, man, I eat a lot of carbs. And I started thinking about it for myself. Yep. And I was like, man, you know, she's starving cancer through like a synergistic method. So basically it's like low dose chemotherapy with intravenous vitamin C, a lot of fasting and walking, and then the removal of carbohydrate. Correct me if I'm wrong, sure. but, for, but from what I've heard about, uh, and, I, and I heard this from Dr. Robert Kiltz, who, for whatever it's worth, I've never heard him wrong, be wrong about anything, but that's beside the point. <laughs> um, but uh, I, heard, I heard him say that uh, cancer cannot live without carbs. Is that true? This is not like there, there, there's a lot of different types of cancer. So there's like blood cancers and then there's like cancers yeah. that Okay. tumors and stuff like that, these lymphomas and stuff that are blood cancers, but I think are a little bit different, but I think as a general rule, I, I believe that to be correct. Yeah. I do know that, that cancer cells thrive almost exclusively on glucose. Right. And, and that's coming from obviously from, from, from 
exogenous carbohydrate. So um, if you if you can starve a cancer cell of its primary fuel source, which is carbohydrate, glucose, sugar, then you're going to have a much better time dealing with it in the end. So okay. fasting is a huge deal. So is, um, you know, obviously a ketogenic diet, I think it'd be indicated here. I think I, th- I think even Lane Norton, of all people, said yeah. if, if I found out that I got cancer, the first thing I would do is go on a fast. Yeah, literally. Yeah, just fast, fast, like crazy. Um, but that's so my, my father got sick. And then and then I read this book. and I'm like, Man, this is I'm really doing a lot of this. And then I started thinking about like maybe I should change my diet too, because, you know, when you see someone you love go through something so horrible, mm-hmm. I mean, it, w- it will, it will shake you to your core. And I was like, man, I don't want to go through that either. Like, you know, yeah. what do I need to do to my life here, Colt? That's, that's cause I don't want that. You know what I mean? And I just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look at my diet. So then I started looking at like, I had heard like, Oh, you'd be vegetarian. That's how you do it. But I'm always like, I'll never be able to do that. I don't like plants. I don't like broccoli. I don't like veg. I don't like vegetables. I've never in my whole life eaten any vegetables. Swear to God. My mother, when I, when I, I I, I haven't had vegetables in over a year and I do not miss, and I do not miss broccoli still. (laughs) When I tell literally I'm 36 years old, Colt, I've never eaten vegetables. You've never eaten vegetables. No, man. My mother, my mother could not get me to eat them. (laughs) <laughs> she wanted me to, but I, I yeah, I, because you're smart. Your body's telling you something. When you try to feed your kids vegetables and they're like, they don't, they, they, these don't taste good. I don't like them. They're saying that for a reason. Correct. There's a reason your children are saying that. Correct. My my my, 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 my children do not eat vegetables. Just for no. I am I, ne- I in my entire life. My mom, I would put. I would never eat it. Like I mean, I am not. I am not embellishing that one iota. I have yeah. never eaten vegetables i would eat eggs and meats and those things i would wolf them down but i will not eat vegetables don't like plant matter but yeah so that, I'm, I'm, that, I'm just i'm just telling you bro for for, for, for someone that does have experience in vegetables you're, you're, you're eating vegetables you're not missing anything <laughs> yes. like if, if 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 we all get honest with ourselves okay why does a salad taste good if you think a salad tastes good which is I don't. The dressing like, yeah you want the dressing right eat, okay eat the lettuce and eat the carrots and eat all all the other nasty shit that's on there and don't put any and don't put anything hyper palatable on. Do you still want that salad? No, you're tricking yourself into eating less. Stop playing that bullshit game and start eating beef, bacon, butter, and eggs like you're supposed to be eating. Correct. But eat, eat a species appropriate diet. We're at the top of the food chain. Eat like that's it. That's, that's literally. And you know what? People can't Not think that it science. could possibly be that simple. And it is. Yeah. Eat when eat, eat beef, bacon, and eggs until you're satiated and then repeat when you're hungry. And that's it. <laughs> Yeah, that's why it's hard to make a living as a health coach that teaches this kind of stuff because I don't know, man. There's not a lot else that you need to do unless you need me to hold your hand through it. You know, like, exactly. I, I, yeah. I, I was, I was, I've, I've been at that point, and so I've had a number of health coaches to help to help me get to where I'm at. And me too. Yeah. <laughs> but but at the end of the day, like if 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 you if you if you need to buy something to make yourself healthier, it, uh, whoa, okay, red flag. Like, is that uh, are you are you fixing a problem like with a specific condition that you actually have or? Or, or, or is it mouth pleasure or something? It's probably not for health. Optimal health, you don't need anything else. That's no. how that's how that's how we got here. That's why we're at the foot top, the top of the food chain. <laughs> like that's Dr. Fact. Anthony Chase. And, and that's not up for debate. No. It's not up for debate. And uh so yeah, my my I was like, you know what? And then I started looking around. I'm like, you know, what's this carnivore thing? That sounds like something I can do. I like meat. And I yeah. and then I played that first London Reel and I was like, man, you know. And then some of the things that he was saying that are just like, he wasn't shoving them down your throat. He's just saying facts. He's like, listen, if red meat's so unhealthy, then why is the place in the world that eats the most of it? Why do they have the longest lifespan? It's Hong Kong. Yeah. I'm like, he's right. Like, he's absolutely right. And then he's like, well, that 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 that's that study the, the 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 one that you just referred to that was the one that sold me. That that, that, that was like, okay. I mean, how do you argue that? How, yeah. What are you going to say to the contrary? Because here's right. what you can't say. Here's what you can't say. Bart Kane. Right. So this is what you can't say. You can't say that red meat causes longevity. You can't say that because you don't know too many confounding factors. But if you look for a correlation, in this case, red meat causing early death, and it's not there, like it's not in the Hong Kong area, then you can rule causation out. So clearly red meat is not harming our longevity. Mm-hmm. Think and this the most the the place in the world with the most centenarian men is in Iceland. That that's a fucking frozen rock in the middle of the northern Atlantic. They don't have there's no they're not growing oranges and mangoes in Iceland, brother. Like yeah. they don't have it. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, to, to piggyback off of what you're saying right now, I'm, I'm, I'm reading uh, Why We Are Carnivores by Dr. Anthony Chafee. Um, and as much as I want to recommend this book, I would say don't waste your time. Just listen to everything that he speaks on because this is a, this, this, this is a uh, transcription. Yeah. So um, another gentleman actually did a pretty good job um, uh, putting his words into writing, but I, I'm just not much for transcriptions. But anyway, uh, so, something that I've been that, that I've been learning from, like basically, and anything that Dr. Anthony Chafee says is, is 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 it's not it's not so much what you eat, but what you don't eat. Beef, beef has the least amount of anti nutrients and does the least amount of damage to your body. Facts. And, and so and so when you eat anything else that has anti nutrients, okay. And and, and why, why is red meat so clean? Because it's been, because ruminant animals have four stomachs. Correct. So but that 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 that, that it does they've done ninety percent of the digestion for you at that point, right? Correct. Which is which is why we're built to metabolize fat better than any other animal on the planet, and why we can't digest fiber. We can't even digest plants. So yeah, no wonder. No, no, why no, you got no, an no, appendix no. and it's this big, right? And it's like okay, I guess technically speaking, yeah. right? Technically technically speaking, if you if you want to play this calories in calories out game, then yeah, eating plants will do it. You will lose weight, but at what at what expense? You are killing your body. You, you 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 are trashing your body, abusing your body with a lot of food that it can't that, that it can't that it can't even digest properly to the point to where when you stop eating fiber, then you have to go through a transition to 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 get to get back to how you should be pooping, which is which, which which is once a day, if that. Yeah, mine's like every other. Yeah, every other. But I will say this: I do make the mistake. Um, so right now I'm on about. So I'll, let me let me tell you how powerful hyper palatable and processed foods can be baked goods. Oh, you don't have to tell me. I already know, <laughs> but, but let's hear it. <laughs> so I, I, I am an active guy. I go to the gym a lot. I lift a lot. I do a lot of intermittent fasting, 20 hour fast. And I'm, I do this every single day, regardless of what phase I'm in, in my diet. So at worst, I have one sheet sort of day where I can kind of do whatever I want. I'll eat a bunch of garbage, whatever I want for one day, you know, and it usually starts at 11 a.m. I'll have maybe a couple slices of pizza, some gummy bears, wh whatever garbage I want in that particular day. And then it's over come Monday through Saturday and it's back on two meals a day, only red meat, bacon, beef and eggs. That's it. Okay. That's what you're eating, man. Beautiful, love it, love that's it. That's literally music, music to my ears. Music that, to my what, ears, bro. What that's I how you told do it. You as as a as a Sunday cheat is as extravagant as I get, and I have maintained that for five years now. What, what's with the gummy bears? Are you trying to get college out of it, it or what? I love them. Don't judge <laughs> it's me. Never been my thing. You can keep Dude, those. I just love. I love like fruity. I don't know. It's retarded. My girl, my girl, look at me like, what are you like? Like, I don't know. So anyway, let me give you some context. I'm six foot three and I'm about 217.8 pounds about 37 days ago. So, um, wow. I'm six, I'm six foot two and two eleven. So there you go. So <laughs> I quit, I quit that one cheat day. Okay. Uh -huh. 38, 37 days ago. I weighed myself this morning. I was 202.4 pounds. <laughs> oh man. So, and all I did. Now I feel like a fat ass. Thanks for that. No, you, you've got way more muscle on you than I do. I, I can't lift as heavy as you can. You're a fucking monster. I watched some of your aunt here and stuff. You have a very impressive physique, man. You've worked very hard. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, but th that's the one thing that I, that I quit was I, I took out the, the cheats, the one cheat. That's how powerful it is. It's literally one. And I'm talking Monday through Saturday, dude, I hit a 20 hour fast, two meals a day. I don't, I don't even look at a carb and just one cheat meal a weekend can do that much damage. We're talking, dude, that's like 15 pounds. Yeah. They're mostly water, but you know, still, it's just, it's absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, but I, and I'm also a huge advocate of strength training. I think strength training is absolutely fundamental. Mm -hmm. Like, especially in, yeah, I'm not, I think you said you're in your early thirties. So you're like right in your prime right now, but you're establishing the foundation. that's going to stead you, you know, long, long into your life, you know? And, and I think that as we age, particularly older people, as we atrophy and we lose muscle mass, that's really bad. There's a lot of your immune systems there your ability to fight disease. Um, and I think that your lean tissue should be guarded as gold because it is. Right. Um, and I think that that gets lost on a lot of people. They don't like my mother. She's, 
she's in her mid sixties now. And, you know, I just got her to quit smoking a year ago and she's like eating right. And now she's doing exercises with me. And now she's, I can't believe how good I feel now. Like, like it's crazy. Right. When you treat yeah. your body, like it's not an amusement park. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I'm going to run by you some of uh, my notes, just like, man, like I, I, I've been explaining this to clients and on the podcast, like as many different ways as I can, as, as I possibly can. I'm just going to summarize some of the notes that I came up with and just let me know if you see any flaws in it or if you would oh. like, uh, you know, say anything sure. differently. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Go for it. Cool. Cool. Okay. So human beings, uh, we gain energy through a chemical process, right? We can't absorb heat units because we are not a steam engine. Correct. Oh um, okay. So calories are a measurement of a specific form of energy, which is heat. Mathematically, there is a construct that enables you to convert from one type of energy for another. A construct is an idea or theory containing various conceptual elements, typically one considered to be subjective and not based on empirical evidence. I thought that was interesting to note. Uh, so this requires machinery for which this energy can be converted from one form into another. It was originally invented to be used on steam engines. This is in the 1800s, way before people started using this to track nutrition, way before anybody thought of it for, for that purpose, because that's not what it was invented for. Here again, it was used to compare fuel between fuel efficiency between steam engines, which is a closed system of what you can conduct experiments on that does not have other outside variable factors like a human body does. Not and, near a to that degree. And, and humans are an open thermodynamic system. Thank you for adding that. Yeah, see, I need your help on these big words. <laughs> you got it. So, though. Other than that, you're nailing it. You're absolutely okay, okay right. good. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, calories never had anything to do with nutrition in the first place because newsflash, humans are not steam engines. Um, episode 154, actually, on this show, on this channel, the supersetyourlife.com podcast, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Thomas, the UK carnivore, um, on our episode, Back to the Basics, Stop Tracking Calories, Eat to Satiety, and Thrive Like Our Ancestors. That that was kind of a new concept about three months into it when he and I recorded that one. And so, so since then, a lot of it has, um, you know, become more fresh. But calories, they, what do they do? They trick people into eating less. It's a restrictive mentality. It usually ends up killing your metabolism and, and your thyroid. And I can relate to all that. Um, you'll likely gain with that weight back very, very quickly. In the United States, people lose more weight than almost any other country, but we always gain it back, and we're still and we still lead the world in obesity. So something's not not working. Tracking calories does not work long term. Of course, it works in the short term because you're making the scale go down, but at the expense of your health and at the expense of 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 of, of what you of what you do every day. Probably um, saying that I ate too many calories is like saying I should have taken a deload week three injuries ago. We don't measure time and injuries. I don't know. Maybe some of us do. I probably could at this point. <laughs> but uh, we yeah, measure... you're nailing this though. You're nailing it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, yeah. just let me know if I'm off track. But this is this is this is what I've learned. Like like this this is like my summary over the last year. So, uh, um, we we don't measure time and injuries. We measure it in days, weeks, months, etc. And we shouldn't use heat measurements for nutrition either. So none of my none of my clients to this day know how many calories are in their plan unless they do their own math. But I'm not aware of anybody that's doing that. Like I'm, I'm telling them their protein to eat, the amount of carbs to eat, and the amount of fat to eat, and what foods to eat in what order. Calories, I don't even know. How, I, I, I do not have a clue how many calories um, any of my clients are eating. So um, they signed up for results, not an out, not an outdated mathematical equation. The endocrine system is what we should look for in terms of in terms of healthy, sustainable weight loss, not tracking calories. So tracking calories does not account for leptin, uh, which is your satiety hormone. Le leptin, as you know, is the hormone that tells you that you're full and that you have energy. If you're if your leptin is low, then you're that you think you're hungry and you think you're tired all the time. And artificial sweeteners actually have a lot to do with that. Those suppress leptin as well. Um, the th it, it does, uh, tracking calories does not account for the thermo, uh, thermic effect of food, inflammation, uh, ketogenesis, many other things, including what you just mentioned earlier. I forgot about that one. Yeah. 20% margin and food errors. So, so like it could be off 20% on the label on yeah, so the top FDA, of all that. Essentially just, just to, to piggyback you here, but you're absolutely correct. The, right, the, right. the, the, the food and drug administration allows the number that you see on the package to be off by 20%. Okay. Which is a, and that can be in either direction. So you're talking about the potential of a 40% swing. 
which is when you think about that, if you're talking the potential of a 40% swing on everything you're trying to count, the number you actually end up with could be fucking way off. Like, yeah, dude, like it, it's, it's, it's infuriating to think that actually it's like you, yeah. you, 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 you would not pass anything else if you're off by 20%. No. So why, so why the hell are we allowed, uh, uh, is, is there allowed to be a 20% uh, margin and the accuracy of food labels. Imagine if you got I, on a plane I, I, I think, and they were I think, like, "I think our health is like the most important thing that we have." Right? Imagine if you got on an airplane and the pilot was like, "Listen, this thing lands <laughs> right twenty percent of the time, every time." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would and you what's get more, on it? Uh, no, yeah. Fuck, and what? what? And, and what's more? And, and what? And, and what? And what's more important to you? Uh, be, be, being being off by a couple hours and then having to get a car to go to your next place, or or or, or completely ruining your health. That'll happen. It, you, and it, may, it may not happen overnight, but it, but but it but it but it adds up. Exactly. That, You're absolutely right. Absolutely that, that, nailed. What, calories in, calories out. Busted. Debunked. It's nonsense. I don't care how many sense, people repeat dude. it. It's garbage. Just drop it and move on. It's stupid. Yeah. You know. You know what it is. Um, you eat like you said a species specific diet, and let your satiety hormones take care of it. Eat yeah. as much as you're done until you're full, and then you're done. Yeah. It, but but you can't ever trust whether you're hungry or not if you have a lot of processed foods in your diet. You, True. You, you you will never know. You're probably hungry all the time. Most people are. Some people aren't. Most people are. Uh, listen, I'm Uncle Adrian. I can eat a lot of gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> hey, everyone. Coach Taylor Milton here. Welcome to Skull Bells TV, the official YouTube channel of supersetyourlife.com, where you're going to discover a weekly upload of quick and easy to follow workout tutorials featuring Coach Colt, myself, or one of our athletes to keep your workouts fun, practical, and effective. Our family's latest keto carnivore recipes that fuel Colt's competitions and keep myself and our kiddos strong and healthy. Video uploads of the supersetyourlife.com podcast, now over 100 episodes, your weekly dose of entertainment, education, and inspiration to fuel your life inside and beyond the gym, and much more. Last thing before we get into the video, we're asking a big favor from you. This has been working beautifully. So if you would please think of someone you care about that would benefit from this video, go ahead and smash that like button, click the share button and text this video to them. That would mean the world to us. And while you're at it, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss more exciting content from School Bells TV because our team has lots of meat and lots of muscle coming your way and I promise you won't want to miss it. When you hit the subscribe button, you'll see a bell icon pop up. You want to click that too. So you're notified every time we release a new video. Thank you so much for the support. It means the world to us. Every like share and subscription helps our channel grow and supports our family's hard work. So thank you so much for doing your part too. That's all we ask. God bless you. And please enjoy this video. Uh, I, I got this question uh, right before we started actually. And I thought I might ask you if that's okay. No, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, cool. So this is a listener question from Teresa Anderson Strike from uh, from Florida. She is an online transformation coach who helps women ach uh, to achieve a healthy body composition and to regain their vitality using a keto carnivore diet. Um, she was actually featured on our podcast. That was a very good one on Carnivore Coaches Corner, session number 36. That was a few weeks ago. Uh, she messaged me right before you and I started recording, pal, and asked, I would love to know Stephen's opinion on how to handle intuitive eating for when you're still trying to lose fat maintain weight and build muscle like that's a lot of goals so how do we manage these successfully uh so like if we can't track I'm calories what should we you? track which is Wait, a very understandable question again you broke up one oh, oh. I, was, I was gonna say so I, I think what she's basically asking is if we if if, if 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 we shouldn't be tracking calories then what should we be tracking i would weigh it weigh your food it's a mass in mass out mass in mass out exactly correct i would weigh it yep so if you're trying to lose weight like if you let's say that like a guy and you i was going to ask you like um as a bodybuilder physique competitor guy how exactly do you go about you know, do you just lower the fat oh i love it yeah so um are you talking like like like, like you right now if you were gonna if you were gonna be like i'm just gonna get shredded and do it in 30 in 30 days see how fast i can get i would guess i would guess that you would go up in protein down in fat uh, actually the opposite i'm glad you asked yeah so i, I, would, I would actually um do you, do you track your macros what are your macros i i don't no i don't mm -mm. you have a ballpark i'd say it's probably 70 percent fat 30 percent protein somewhere in that region maybe, maybe 65 35 oh cool fat to protein well i guess i do have a little bit of carbs probably like 28 grams of carbs a day because i do have some yogurt and chobani and there's like four so maybe like it's heavy fat 
Um, so your macros are probably somewhere around like, I don't know, 180 protein, 250 fat, and like 30 carbs, 20 carbs. Yeah, I'd say that's probably accurate. Something very close to that, yeah. Okay, so if you were going to get shredded, uh, my, my knee-jerk reaction, I mean, every, everybody's different. Actually, um, I'm finding that half of my female clients, I don't know why, but ladies in particular seem to do better with higher protein, lower fat. Like they'll, they'll get, they'll, they'll get diarrhea if I make them eat too much fat. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. The, the guy, guys, I never really have that problem. Uh, my macros right now are crap. They're up, they're up over the wall. I can't remember what the, uh, I, I could, I could tell you right now, actually, <laughs> cause I've been, uh, cause I'm, I'm, uh, just now starting to think about cutting. I don't like to go cutting uh not cutting to cutting like overnight because yeah. i don't know it's just too many changes I like, I like to ease into it so uh, i'm gonna be starting on starting the lion diet with a couple other clients here um in a couple of days doing the lion diet again but uh yeah my macros right now are 190 grams protein okay. which is like kind of like a thousand pounds so that'd be about right yeah yeah so if i i mean that's kind of like rock bottom for me i don't like it being any lower than that unless i'm like really trying to cut and so what that does is it uh lowers my insulin and it lowers and, and it uh, makes sure that i stay in a ketogenic uh, state so if yeah. i'm in a ketogenic metabolic sp- state i know that my metabolism is optimized by 30 percent. it's 30 percent higher so I, that that's why i love personally and i get way better results uh robert sykes does this too i learned it from him um, okay. his, his his knee-jerk reaction is always to take protein away first um, as long as so you're you go down gram, in protein, up in fat. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually go down in protein, up in fat. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. I, I know. Very I would have uh, thought it would be the opposite, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong then. So do you, uh, so, how do you so, feel? So, so, so it, and, it, and here again, bro, it all depends on the person. Like I said, uh, I'd, I'd say about 30, uh, 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 this works for about two thirds of the people that I train. A, th- um, a, a third of them, they do better with higher protein, lower fat. And th- that's yeah. what you find out with trial and error. I think I would do better with higher fat. Mm-hmm. I think I because oh, I wouldn't be surprised. When I get too lean, it just I don't like it. I don't like yeah. the way I feel. Yeah, because like all like my, myself and all my male athletes in particular, I don't. I'm not training one guy that is eating more protein than they are fat. They are all eating more fat than they are protein right now. Oh yeah, usually by a pretty big swing too. It's like usually like seventy thirty. Yeah. If you go on a if you go on a strict carnivore diet, you're going to be probably you because because you can't get you'll get you'll get a, uh, I don't know if your listeners have heard, ever heard of something called rabbit sickness but if you, if you remove an energy source which is carbohydrate you're using all your energy from fuel if you go too low in that fat storage you'll get rabbit sickness because you don't have any energy fuel. you don't have any energy storage I didn't know that what it's called I just feel like shit when, when that when that's, that happens yeah so that's why. <laughs> they call it rabbit sickness because back I don't remember how where exactly this comes from I could be inaccurate here but it has something to do with because they were hunt. They're not left, but rabbits to hunt, and they're very lean. Oh, okay. And that's and that's where it comes so from. Because we're, that, know, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah, because that that's that's the first thing that I figured out. Like, if you just go carnivore diet and like don't give any thought to you, don't give any thought to macros, you're going to grossly overconsume protein and underconsume fat if you're not careful. And you're going to feel like shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. W- yeah. Which is why beef, bader, uh, excuse me, beef, bacon, butter, eggs. That, that that's why that's like the fountain of youth. Because 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 really because yeah. then you're nailing your macros and you're eating all the right foods, none of the Big bad dope. foods, and and then it'll kind of align your genes and your hormones mm-hmm. and set them right down the correct pathway all by itself, and everything else will every just fall off. I've every never, single I've, I've, clinical never, I've never ever I've never ever seen it backfire. I've seen it work every single time. That's just personal. It will all and, and every single clinical and objective measure of your health will get better. Your skin will improve. Yep. Your hair, my beard, you get right. sunburned less. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's literally, and the, and it, it's getting so big at this point. There's no way anybody can deny it. No. Let's talk guns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. Thanks, man. <laughs> well, that, hey, I love it. Go. Okay, let's let, let. Oh, all right, all right. Let's 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 see that rifle first, man. I want to see your rifle. Tell me all about you it. You want to see? All right. So, I'm a big, uh, long range guy. I'm just getting into this world. So that is. I'm a left. So, 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 so is this is this for hunting or is this no self well, defense? Like- I'm I might go on a hunt with it. I do want to do that. Um, at some <laughs> there's point. nothing that more is- it, there's nothing more satisfying than shooting a deer with a tactical gun. I'm sorry, oh, man. It's man. just fun. <laughs> so, so as a kid, as I was growing up, I grew up in northern Illinois. I always wanted uh-huh. to get. I wanted to be a a Marine Scout sniper. That's yeah. what I wanted to do. Is like the job I wanted to do. And they told me that you can't do it because you have to become infantry first and do all this other bollocks. So I was like, ah, oh, man. So I talked to an Air Force recruiter and they're like, listen, I can guarantee you a law enforcement job. So I went that route. But I never fell out of love with the, with the desire to learn 
how to do long range marksmanship. So in my eyes, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'll be getting a brown belt soon. So I've Very got nice. the hand to hand thing done. I yeah. did the AR and the M4 and the M9. Man, I don't care if I had more muscle mass than you. If you and I meet uh, and, and we don't get along, I am dead. <laughs> <laughs> I get run. I get run, Baz. You're a big dude. So, um, so the Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't. I don't fight if people break. I, I don't. I don't fight if people break into my house, man. I just flex and hope they go away. Because if they fight, yeah, me, I don't they do it. Though, game you're over. massive. They probably like, God <laughs> damn, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I was like, you know what? So I got the hand to hand stuff down and the mid range stuff I can do. I've been shooting an AR 15 and M4 my entire, you know, for, for years now. Nice. I got to figure out now how can I so, kill stuff from like a mile and a half away? So, 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 so you're an, a, so you're an AR guy, not an AK guy. That's a controversial. What, what do you, why, why do you like ARs over AKs? Uh, so, well, I guess it's just the, uh, the American side of me and I carried it overseas, uh, the M4. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I don't have anything against an, 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 a, an, an AK. In fact, I think AKs killed more people than anything else in the world, but, um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a great weapon. It's reliable. I mean, you could, you could dump sand in the action of an AR. Yeah. They say that you could like drop it in the lake and get and, and take it out a month later and it'll still it, shoot. Just it will just continue. But, um. I, I do like the platform of the M4. I think it's a great weapon system. It's it's you know it's like seven and a half pounds fully loaded. It's really easy to carry. It's just universally. It's also very reliable. It's a NATO round, a two two four. It's a really good round, easy to find. It's cheap. Um, you know, it's just effective in what it does. It's designed to to be on a point target inside of five hundred meters, point and shoot. And it just it some things they just get right, and that was one yeah. of them. It just works. You know, nice. What what uh what what brand AR? Um, so thinking? I think they carry Colt, the military. Uh, Daniel Defense makes a great one. Um, Badger Tactical makes a great one. What was the one you had? That looked nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll just grab it right now. Yeah. Um, so this is this is my home build. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Is that a Bo got my, Yeah, my, my brother Bo got me the scope actually for Christmas, and so I just got that on. Um, that yeah. probably would have been nice when I was deer hunting, but I shot my deer before Christmas, and so <laughs> – yeah, bro. I was I was out with. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm not really a hunter, man. Like I I I I I, like, I can I can shoot deer. I know what I'm doing, but like I'm doing it to fill my freezer, right? Like this is not a sport for me. So yeah, yeah. And, and so and so I'm out there like with my gym clothes and everything <laughs> in my in my in my parents' orchard with a deer tag with a deer tag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but 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 look, yeah. And I'm, I'm like, I don't know. I I'd practiced with their hunting rifles before, and I'm like, at this point, I'm just so much more comfortable with my AR, man. Like I love this yeah. thing. Like you know, it's it feels like an extension of my body. And so I went out there with no scope, man. And, uh, but I was, but I was in the, but I was in the orchard. So it was like a lot of trees and I'm like, man, like I know that these deer lay around in here, you know, it's, and so I'm just, I'm just going to find this mother effort and figure out where he's at. And yeah, man, it, it just, it just all happened so fast. Um, he, he, he jumped up, I look at me and I'm like basically point blank with a, uh, with a, with a four by three and bang. 300 pounds of beef later <laughs> or, excuse, or excuse me, three, 300 pounds of venison later. Here we are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, that's, that's, that's how it's supposed to be done right there, man. That is a beautiful yep. one. Get a flashlight on it too. Is it? Thanks, man. Yeah. So, so, so I got a light on the front because like for home defense, um, the, yeah. So the, so the light is so that you can see your target, but your target can't see you because you're blinded if this is looking at you. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then I got, oh, yeah. and I got the laser on the bottom. Uh, the only thing that sucks about it is I had to take the iron sights off to put the scope on. Yeah. But here again, it's like, okay, anything close enough, I just use a laser, anything that's uh, yeah. like two, 300 yards out, that's what the scope's for. Yeah. Do you, do you have any like handguns and stuff like that in the house? Um, yeah, I got a, let's see, do I have my Glock on me right now? Yeah, there you go. Glock's on the great band. I got one. Upstairs. Oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I, sometimes I have it in my backpack and sometimes I don't. <laughs> it, dep okay. it depends on like if I got to remember to take it out before I fly somewhere, man. <laughs> yeah, Glock, Glock's the way to go. Glock. In fact, I, yep, there you go. So, say, so, here, so, yep, see, same, same idea. Yeah, it's got, it's got yeah. a laser and a, and a, and a light on it too. So, like, is that a TLR one on the front of it? Is it a TLR? What's that mean? It's the brand of light. Uh oh, it's a uh, old light. Okay, it's old light. All right, that's a great brand too. Now, I, uh, I, I once went to a seminar where this guy was a big 1911 fan. I love the 1911. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great platform. And uh, I was at this self-defense seminar and this guy was like, a, it was a concealed carry seminar, self-defense seminar. And this guy was teaching it. And someone in the crowd, the guy who was teaching it actually helped build it the 1911 platform. And he was like, some, someone in the crowd asked him a question. He was like, what do you carry for your, um, like your own concealed carry? He goes, oh, I carry a Glock. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, wait a minute, you help build the 1911 and you carry a Glock. He goes, that's right. 
<laughs> wow. I want to tell us, dude, I want to tell a story to a lot of my friends because I get shit for having a Glock. And no, I think no, Glock no, is great. no, no, no. There's, it, it will, it's just like that AK. It's, listen, the Glock is, if, it, if a Glock didn't, if a Glock wasn't so good, everyone wouldn't have copied it. That's true. Everyone did. Everyone copied it. Glock is a great, great weapon system. Don't let any of your friends tell you different. It is. Especially if you're concealing, man. Like, it is so, it is so discreet. My sister-in-law packs one. My wife packs one. <laughs> yeah. It's reliable. Shoots every time. Mm-hmm. As lo- unless, unless you're using wolf ammo. You got to use brass ammo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. I never had an issue with my Glock, though. It's it's, it's only the AR that jams, but it's, it's uh, yeah, but it only jams up when I use, uh, like, steel, steel ammo, wolf ammo, just, uh, just cheap ammunition. You know, you get what you pay for. As long as I'm putting clean stuff through, I don't have to clean it very often, so. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Well, I think we, uh, I think, we, I, I think, I think, I think that case is closed after this. Like, if you're still listening and you're still tracking calories, then. Whew, I'm sorry. Like, I, 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 yeah, I don't know how you can still do that. Like, I, 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 I seriously don't know. I mean, um, people will believe anything that they hear if they hear it enough, even if it makes no sense whatsoever. There's been studies on the subconscious mind, how this works. And, you know, we, we live in a society where we've been taught something that makes absolutely no sense. But yet here we are. We're, we're adults and we all believe it because it's all we've ever been taught. And it's all we never know. And it's wrong. It's dead wrong. And I think that there needs to be more people like more, more people like you, more people like Sean Baker that have the balls to actually stand, stand up and say, no, you know what? This is wrong. And, 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 and here's why, and here's a better way to do it. So I'm on that I just, team. Yeah. yeah, I'm on that team too, man. I, 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 I appreciate you. Thanks for, you know, th- 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 thanks, thanks for, um, I don't know, I guess seeing the truth and seeing the value in the truth and not just taking the easy route that so many other people do and just go, okay, well, I don't know. I'd rather not argue with, I'd, I'd rather not argue with everybody. Um, yeah, I think, this I think is the truth. This is what I believe well, in, and I'm, gonna, and I'm going to preach it till the day I die. Same, same here, man. I think that you deserve that too. You're, 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 you're a member of this community too, and I think that um, you, like others, share the inherent moral turpitude and the goodness in you that you want to see people get healthy because that's what this is about. This is about I, I, I don't do this for money. I don't do this because because of anything. What's motivating me to do this is is I watch my dad die, and I don't want I I don't want suffering. I don't I don't like that. And yeah. there's a way to not suffer. You don't have to suffer. So, if any of your listeners are listening to this, and you guys need help, if you want coached through anything like that, if you have a person that you know that's struggling metabolically, if he's between that age of 35 and 60, have him shoot me a phone call or a DM. Send me an email. Get on my website www.theancestralperspective.com book a consultation call with me and I'll see what I can do to help him. Thanks again, everybody. So very much for joining us for this entire conversation with coach Steven. If you found this helpful, please pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Uh, if you are not subscribed to our nutrition podcast, carnivore coaches corner, you are totally missing out. All right. We have had a lot of the guests that Steven and I were just talking about on that show. Uh, if you are a fan of the low carb lifestyle or just getting into it, just search carnivore coaches corner on the same platform that you are listening to. Now you should find us no problem. And if you don't let me know, I'll help you find it <laughs> a quick special offer before we we sign off if you like salt and if you like potassium and if you like to save money make sure you're listening up please and make sure you write this code down too so the code is k-i-s the number four and then the word potassium k is for potassium <laughs> think back to high school everybody so uh for our pink potassium cave salt it is on our website supersetyourlife.com you can save 15 percent off your purchase of five or more pink potassium cave salt has almost as much potassium as it does sodium the list of essential role, ro- roles that potassium plays in your body for health and athletic performance is miles long. And here's two of the reasons that I personally advocate um, the, 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 the use of supplementing potassium. So the first reason is for muscle cramps, um, depending on when they are, especially if they're during your workout or any time earlier in the day. I don't know why this, uh, again, thinking back to high school, this is this was advice from my track coach that I've just been taking as gospel ever since, and it has worked. This has worked um, almost every single time that I've recommended this to a client, unless there's something else that's causing them to have muscle cramps. It could be dehydration or whatever, but potassium is usually the culprit if it's mid-workout. If you're cramping at night, like you're getting calf cramps in the middle of the night and you don't know why, that has usually been a def- uh, magnesium deficiency, at least in my experience. And so Try, trouble, try uh, troubleshooting with both of those if you're experiencing muscle cramps. Uh, number two is, have you recently removed processed foods? These have disproportionately high levels of chemically modified preservatives, high in sodium and high in potassium. So if you clean up your diet rather quickly, 
That's why you might experience temporary uh, potassium deficiencies and as a result are wise to supplement in my opinion. So I have not gone, personally, I've not gone a single day without pink potassium cave salt since discovering it years ago before my last four keto carnivore bodybuilding competitions and I never looked back. Um, they're okay on the lion diet too because it's just plain natural salt the way that God made it. Um, it's, a, it's been a favorite of our athletes and our flagship supplement ever since. Artificially sweetened electrolyte supplements are tasty and helpful and certainly have a place in the world of health and fitness, but they don't have near the potassium that this stuff does. Uh, uh, Celtic sea salt, pink potassium cave salt, try saying that 10 times fast, <laughs> is naturally and sustainably sourced and imported from an underground ancient seabed in Spain. It's wild, isn't it? Uh, so much more potassium than most leading brands such as Relight and LMNT. The code once again is K is for potassium. As for our pink potassium cave salt that you can gra grab off of our website at supersetyourlife.com. We've got a bunch of them in stock and they're calling your name. 15% off your purchase of five or more once again. Thank you one more time. We'll catch you next Monday on episode 226 where we will get you pumped up for a following week. So I really pray and hope that you have a good weekend. I'm going to leave you with our battle cry at supersetyourlife.com, which goes something like this. Do you not know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit whom is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. And I didn't make that up, by the way. That is 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. God bless, and we'll catch you on the next episode, everybody. Thanks a lot.